This is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to wind the bobbin, thread the bobbin case, and thread the needle on a Singer Model 413 stylist. Now this machine winds bobbins and threads needles like dozens of other Singer sewing machines do. But I know that people come here looking for the answer to this because they're new to the machine. The machine's new to them. They bought the machine or inherited the machine. So that's why I do these little videos. To start the winding, uh, bobbin winding procedure, what we want to do is uh, use the stop motion knob to disengage um, the needle bar and the feed dog. And to do that, you need to hold this hand wheel with your left hand and turn this inner stop motion knob. Like that. And it's just a small turn, about an eighth of a turn. And that takes pressure off the stop motion washer inside and it allows the hand wheel to turn without operating the needle bar or the feed dog. Then you're going to take the thread that you want to wind onto your bobbin and put it on one of the bobbin uh, the thread spools up here on the top. Doesn't matter which one. And then you take the thread and it doesn't matter if the threads coming off the back like that or if you put it on the other way and it's coming off the back it doesn't matter but what's important is that you run the thread underneath this disc this is the bobbin winder thread tension disc and there's a little spring in there so you come around the back side and slip it between the triangle bracket and the disc and that puts a little tension when you're winding the disc. And you want to have tension on there so that you'll have a nice even winding of your bobbin. Right? If you don't use that tension disc, you're going to have a kind of what's considered a sloppy wind and it can create problem and skip stitching when you're sewing. Then you're going to take your class 66 bobbin and in the side of it on either side should be a little hole that's for the thread to come out. So you put the thread between the sides and out through that little hole so the thread is going from the inside out like that and then with that thread that you brought out going up you bring this over and you put the bobbin on the bobbin winding spindle and push it on all the way okay now when you start winding you want to hold on to that thread because you don't want it to come out of course let me get that little scissor here I thought I had one but I don't see it um, now sometimes the Singer manuals say hang on to that until it breaks off and uh, sometimes it says after you wind a little bit and you, you get it going good that you cut it off. So that's usually what I do if you're using a hard thread <laughs> it's not too easy to break. And we're going to turn this control knob here from sew to wind. And that's going to move the spindle and inside the friction ring or tire over against the back of the hand wheel. So you just turn it like that. Did you see it go over? Okay. And then you're going to press on your foot controller. And you want a steady even speed, not at 100%. So uh, of course you have the machine turned on, so you got power to the motor, and then just hang on to that while you wind a little bit of it on there. Okay, 
So if it'll break off, great. If not, cut it off. And then you're going to continue to wind at a steady pace. And then you can wind it complete so the thread pushes against that silver stop which will push the bobbin away and stop winding it or you can wind manually how much you want but when you're finished winding you just turn that back to so which will move the spindle and friction ring away and cut the thread leave yourself three or four inches okay and then you can pull up your bobbin that you've wound and then don't forget to go back over here and hold on to the hand wheel and turn that inner knob back to the right tightly that re-engages the needle bar and the feed system so you'll be able to sew later don't forget to do that or you're wondering why the needle bar is not working now this is the drop-in bobbin system on this, a horizontal drop-in bobbin. So let me get it close over here to you. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can even get a little closer. Maybe. maybe I can zoom a little. Yep. So I'm going to take out this bobbin with pink thread. And I'm going to put in the bobbin that I wound with white thread. And with the thread coming off the top left, so when I pull on it, the bobbin's going to turn counterclockwise. I'll drop that bobbin in. And on the bobbin case that the bobbin fits into, there's two little notches. And you have to take that thread in one notch the one closest to you and pull it around and take it out the other notch because that puts the bobbin thread behind the bobbin tension spring so you just come around up here next to the two screws you'll see a slit a slot you pull it in there and you pull it towards the back far as it will go back there and then you lay it across the bobbin at a diagonal and you close that up and there's a little space left in there so you've wound your bobbin and you put it in the bobbin case and you've uh, threaded the bobbin case and you're prepared later to bring that bobbin thread up through the needle plate okay then we'll thread, go back up now, we'll thread the needle on this. And I'll use a different, I can leave my bobbin thread there for now. I might need to wind another bobbin while I'm sewing. And I'm going to use a blue thread for my needle thread. And I'll put it over here. And the same thing, you can bring the thread from the front or the back. But now, we're not putting it behind that little disc, right? We're going to put it in the uh, arm cover thread guide. And it just goes from the back and snaps into the front. Then here comes the fun part, okay? We have to get that thread between two of those three tension discs. And to make sure that the thread will go in, you must lift up your presser foot. Because when the presser foot is down, that puts tension. Oops, got that set to zero. Let me turn it to four is about normal. That puts tension on the tension unit. When you lift up your presser foot, there's a mechanism in the nose up here that 
pushes back on the tension spring in there. Did you see that move a little bit? See it move back? So now it's nice and loose. Okay. So holding on to the thread on the spool, or I usually just put my thumb here against the thread, then come down and pull the thread against this chrome piece right there and that's called the tension thread guide and that big curved chrome piece is made so you can lay the thread against it and just move it from the right to the left and slide it on that tension on that uh, thread guide and it'll go right in between two of the three discs so you don't have to try and you know maneuver it in there just put it right on that a chrome thread guide and slide it right in. I'll do it again. And that's why you hold on to the thread up above so you got some tension on it. You see, just press it back there a little bit against the front of that and slide it across it from the right, uh, right to the left. And it's going to go in between the tension discs there. Now still holding on to the thread up there, you're going to bring it up Maybe I'll reposition this so that you can get a closer look here. So this little spring right there is called the thread take up lever check spring. See that? You're going to bring the thread up against that and lift it all the way up until the thread comes to the right behind this little positioning finger. It's a little positioning finger right there. And the thread's going to lift this up and pop over that finger and then it's going to lay right down here in this thread guide behind the check spring. Okay, is that that's as much as I can zoom there. So let's go ahead and do that. And remember to hold your thread up above, either by holding the spool of thread or putting your thumb against it. So I'll come back and slide it in. And then I'm going to lift it up and back. And it's going to go up and around that positioning finger. And the reason they call it positioning finger is because it positions the thread to stay in line with those discs so that the thread will stay between there when you lift your presser foot later to pull your work out the thread will stay positioned between the tension discs okay now I'm going to turn the hand wheel to bring my take up lever up to the top so I'm just turning the hand wheel towards me See how it's up nice and high there? And then I'm going to take the thread behind the up, upper thread guard, thread guide, this little U-shaped thing that just keeps the thread lined up as it goes in and out. See if I pull on the thread, you see that check spring going up and down? Mm-hmm. Okay, then I'm, then I'm going to thread this take-up lever from right to left. There's a hole in it. Newer machines just have a slot in the back. But the vintage machines usually have a hole that you have to thread. And I'm going to pull on it again. And I can see my check spring here bouncing away yep okay now from the take up lever up here I'm going to come to the nose cover thread guide this little kind of like wire ring right there that's to help guide the thread and keep it away from all of this on the way back down to the needle and usually you can pull from the left side of it towards the front 
and it will pop back in there. This one isn't. So I'm going to just thread that wire ring and put the thread down through it. Mm -hmm. See my my tension spring is still good. I'm good all the way now. Yeah. I'll turn this around again so you can see. So there's another little wire uh, loop there that's a thread guide. And that's called the needle bar thread guide. And it's kind of like a little pigtail wire. So it'll come over the top from the left, over the top to the right, and over the tail of that pigtail so that the thread ends up in the hole in the center. Okay. And then there's one more uh, thread guide, and that's called the needle clamp thread guide. And right at the base of the needle clamp, see that kind of square piece right there? Right at the base of it is a slot. There's a little opening there, a horizontal opening. And you take the thread through there. Uh, so maybe I come around this way. Take the thread through there and take it back to the right and behind it and down so now that thread besides going through the pigtail is going through the needle clamp thread guide okay and I can pull and all the way up here I, I can still see that check spring everything is cool so now I would thread the needle to the back. I put the thread in from the front where I'm sitting to the back. And I won't make you watch this old guy do that, but when I get it done, I'll come back and I'll show you how to bring up this bobbin thread from down below. Okay, so I have my a needle threaded from the front to the back with the needle thread. I've lowered my presser uh, foot uh, to keep some tension on the thread here. And then I'm just going to hold the end of it and I'm going to turn the hand wheel towards me so the needle will go down. See it going down there? And the hook will grab it and take it around in a circle and wrap it around the bobbin thread and you see the bobbin thread moving and then I'll pull it up. So that's called bringing up the bobbin thread because it has to come out up out of the hole in the needle plate. And when you've got them both up here just put them back between the toes of your presser foot or back under the presser foot that you're going to be using and you're ready you know you're ready to sew you can put your fabric there and uh, start sewing lower your foot when you start or stop your your take up lever should always be up high if you don't do that you better hold on to your thread tails in the back down here so that they don't get sucked back out of the needle okay but if you start with your take-up lever up here, it won't matter. So that, my friends, is uh, winding a bobbin, threading the bobbin case, and threading the needle, and bringing up the bobbin case thread up through the hole in the needle plate, and getting ready to sew. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I hope that helped you if you're new to the machine. Come back and see me. Take care.